Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Both. That is Derek Young. Uh, if you see us laughing beforehand, it's because D.Y. just in a hurry put on his on three hat there. And he it wasn't just the fact that he put a hat on. It was the way he did it. It was very much like a kid picking the hat and being like, I'm committing here. So uh, he's been here for a little bit. He was a he was a verbal commit. It's like he just signed now, but uh, D.Y. officially an on three <laughs> Uh, commit with uh, how he's acting, which is timely to talk about because we're here to discuss the latest commit for K-State basketball as they add in the transfer portal. C.J. Jones is on board the UIC transfer. Uh, it comes to K-State, and this is a guy that uh, we've heard about quite a bit throughout the process in the portal, and he has some really likable traits and things that he did the last season at Illinois Chicago that makes him honestly a really good fit for what K-State's looking for. I mean, this is a guy that he was double figures. He does a little bit of everything. As you see there, almost five assists per game, three and a half boards for his size, and shot almost 38% from three. And this feels like the kind of guy that K-State was missing last year that helps to round out a roster. So you have you know, your 1A type guy in Doug McDaniel right now, and you're looking to add more along the lines of McDaniel, but you can't overlook adding dudes like C.J. Jones. I think this is a really high-impact play for K-State. Yeah, I would agree with that. It gives them the length on the perimeter that they were probably kind of lacking, too, because if you take into account – by the way, it's a really good guard room right now because you mentioned Doug McDaniel. They still have Day-Day Ames to bring it in. David Castillo, R.J. is a shooter. But a lot of those guys – with the exception of RJ on the shorter side, Day Day, Doug, uh, and even David Castillo. So bringing in CJ Jones, who can do a lot of good things, but is also six foot five, I believe. Um, that gives you the length on the perimeter that's probably required to not take a step back on defense all that much or be limited on defense. You're going to need a little bit of length to guard um, some of the other team's best players on the perimeter, and he can certainly do that. He has some good advanced numbers defensively. So it makes you think that he has the uh, the skill set and the traits, as you said, to really make a mark on that end of the floor. Uh, the offensive stuff's right there for you. Uh, and what excites me about T.J. Jones is a little bit is go look at his game logs from this past season. It seems like there was a clear light bulb moment for him at the midpoint of the year because that second half of the year, uh, yes, some of his numbers in totality – don't appear exceptional on the surface, although still pretty good. But if you just take the second half of the year, it's pretty remarkable of what he was able to do. And some of the athleticism and the traits, as you said, some, you know, there's a tiny bit of NBA whispers there, or at least professional whispers in terms of what his upside can be. But I mean, he did, and this is with a first half of the season where it seemed like he was still getting his feet wet and still transitioning a little bit, but he, 38% from the three-point line and a almost 30% assist rate is pretty incredible. And those numbers would probably skyrocket even further if he played like he did in the second half throughout the season. So a lot to be excited about. And we're excited, you know, obviously the Kansas State gets a commit and that it's, it exists a little bit because Scott Drew decided to stay at Baylor. So shout out yeah. Sickland. A little, little, uh, little shout out there from DY to the Bears for uh, putting K State in the spot. And you're right. I mean, you go and look at CJ Jones, and from January 13th on, he he had 25 against Bradley on January 13th, and then you oh, go from there. And there were only three more games the rest of the season where he wasn't in double figures. Uh, and he also, if you go and look at what he did against, not necessarily high level competition because he only he only faced one power five team this past year and that was Cincinnati. But in that game he was he was fine. Thirteen points, six of thirteen from the floor. But you can go and see that against other pretty solid teams, like he had seventeen against Indiana State uh in, in a six point loss for UIC there and was efficient, which like he was not playing on a good team. Uh, UIC was four and sixteen in the valley this year. They were twelve and twenty one. And, and that's the one thing where I think people might look at it and you think to yourself, eh, I'm a little weary about the turnover numbers because those can, those can get a little high at times. I mean, he averaged almost three a game, so he was just shy of what Cam Carter did. But the, the thought process here is that think of how Cam Carter kind of had his turnover issues 
masked in year number one at K-State because he wasn't the main guy. C.J. Jones is not coming to K-State to be the main guy. He's coming here to be a really nice third or fourth piece, maybe lower than that, depending on what else K-State does in the portal, and he's going to serve that role really well. So I, there, the concerns that there might be with C.J. Jones, I don't think they're totally valid because I think he's going to be – in a really nice spot, and he's going to be in the perfect role for himself. And like you talked about, I mean, he's a guard, but he's 6'5", so he's got length. There, There's a lot of things to like about what he can do for, for K-State next season. And what they're doing is kind of building a roster full of guys that could be number one or number two options. So, uh, you know, it, there'll be nights where he is probably Kansas State's best player, um, quite frankly, and there'll be nights where he isn't, and I think they're okay with that. I think Jerome Tang has always envisioned – kind of building a roster where he has up to four or five guys that are capable of going off and getting them 20 on any given night. And I think CJ Jones can be one of those in terms of the turnover numbers. I don't know. It's that he's necessarily, he might be, we'll see what happens. The third or fourth option. It's that he doesn't have to be on the ball as much because he will have Doug McDaniel and he will have day day Ames. He is a playmaker, but he won't always be in that playmaker spot because of the other guys around him. Yeah, no, very, very good point there. So C.J. Jones on board for K-State now. They get this ad. This is the second edition from the transfer portal, along with Doug McDaniel. And looking at kind of what expectations should be for him next year, we talk about the fit, and you say, hey, he's not going to have to have the ball in his hand as much. I mean, what what would be the 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 ideal scenario for – how many minutes he's playing, what his role looks like, and then what he provides statistically. Like, I mean, we're talking about what he did last season and looking through game logs and everything. If a year from now we're looking at what C.J. Jones did at K-State, uh, what does that look like? Yeah, boring answer, but it's really hard to tell without knowing what the other pieces are going to be. And they really don't carve those out ahead of time, one, because – they still have to recruit other guys. And if you anoint this guy as this, then it's hard, you know, they, and they have to worry about guys leaving, right? Still the transfer portal is technically still open. So some of this is like stuff that they wait and let play itself out in the off season. And then they'll make delineations at that point. What I will say is what they absolutely need from him at the very least is to continue to be very efficient from the three point line. And some of that's going to be shot selection what kind of threes you're taking because that number did kind of explode. So you hope it's not a fluke. It probably isn't, but shot selection will probably dictate whether it is or not. So still be a really good three point shooter, still be a playmaker when asked to be that playmaker uh, and be what be perhaps the best perimeter defender on the team, right? Because of that length. Yeah, no, that's, that's a good point. Another thing I think that is notable here with CJ Jones is this is the kind of transfer, kind of in the same vein as Doug McDaniel, that is beneficial to helping build a roster continuously. I guess the comparison would also be kind of what K-State's been able to do with David Gasson, where David Gasson came, had three years available to play at K-State, appears that he's going to use all three of those. C.J. Jones, like Doug McDaniel, just a sophomore. So this is not a one-year rental type of deal. This is a this is a guy that is coming in that you're going to have for this year, and you would hope that if things go well the following year as well. And so you're sitting here where you're going to get more continuity with your roster. And this is something that I've I've talked about on here or with various other people. But when a new coaching staff comes in, and especially in the transfer portal world right now, it's about that third season where you start to get some of that real continuity. And we're starting to see that with Jerome Tang's staff. I I would. Tell people, to, like, go look at Iowa State and what T.J. Otzelberger had to do with his roster. And the first two years, while they were able to be successful in making the NCAA tournament, there was a ton of turnover. Last year and now going into his fourth year is where you start to actually see some of the stability. I think K-State might actually be uh, ahead of schedule in terms of building out some of the continuity on their roster with obviously the freshman from last year that stayed, David Castillo coming into the fold, and now getting some more transfers that have extra years available. And uh, we'll, you know, we'll probably talk about it down the road, but there's the the option that K-State might add another transfer or two that has multiple years of eligibility remaining. Yeah, those are nice. Uh, and obviously it was a little bit of an exception, an outlier because of what the hand dealt with. You kind of got to scramble and just take what's available to an extent. And 
they did end up with Keontae Johnson still and went to an Elite Eight. But you know how many players are still here from that Elite Eight team that was still only two years ago? I believe it's just David Gasson and Taj Manning. Yeah, yeah, good point. It's it, it turns over pretty quick, but I think if you get the right guys in, you can uh, you can make it last. And even if you have some of that turnover, because guys are going to want to go somewhere else and play, you are going to have a majority of the guys stick around if if they make sense for you. And I think that's where this roster is going. But C.J. Jones, a nice add for K State because I think. Just as impactful as a guy like Doug McDaniel is, I think adding players like C.J. Jones, those are – I mean, that's where that's really where you make your hay. You can get the big fish, but you also need to kind of fill a roster out elsewhere and, and make this, a, a you know, not just, hey, we're hitting you hard up high. you got to have consistency throughout the order, and I think we're seeing that uh, with C.J. Jones coming to K-State. So a big get for the Wildcats, their second portal commit – and uh, they're certainly working on getting more. So for the latest on K-State in the hunt in the transfer portal, head over to kstateonline.com. We'll keep you covered over there at On3, and we'll also have plenty of stuff, football recruiting as spring is winding down uh, in terms of spring ball and uh, everything else in between that goes on with K-State. So for Derek Young, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online.